Hello guys, in this video we will see how to download images in parallel using Swift Concurrency. Let's get started. My name is Pete and this, this is Swift and Tips. Alright, let me show you the demo that we have today. It's another demo with Pokemons, of course. This time we have the Pokemons that Ash captured used in the first generation. We have already implemented this and it's a pretty basic application. It's just downloading these six images. But let me show you what is inside and what is interesting about this demo. Let's start by the UI. In this case, we have a scroll view with just a couple of static items. In this case, just six items, six Pokemon. And this data, in this case, is literally data. So in other words, we are downloading the images from the network and we are not decoding it. We are just keeping the data and we are just passing that data information to this image view. I just added this extension because by default image view doesn't support data initializer. And here we are just converting that data information into an UI image. We later use UI image because it's supported by image view by default. That's all about the view. So let's go now to Pokemon Loader. Here is the interesting part. As I mentioned before, we are not using, in this case, a model. We are just using literal data. We have a function that is an asynchronous function using the async await format. And we are just getting the image from this URL. In this case, we are just downloading one image per request. As you can see in this load method, we are loading the Pokemons from Ash, Capture, and individually by the ID of that Pokemon. That simple. And again, we are using the async await format. Or in this case, we are having a try because, well, this function could fail for some reason. And at the end, we just use this array to store our Pokemon data. That's cool. However, there is something really important you need to understand when you are working with async await implementations. Remember that async await, it's literally transforming the closures into this structure format. So in other words, this kind of operations are in terms of closure nested one after other. What I want to say is that each of those operations are waiting the earlier operation before continue. Here, for example, we are getting the first image from yeah, the Bulbasaur image, and we are waiting for that image before loading the next one, in this case, Charizard image, and so on. Actually, let me show you that with this other helper function that I have here, which is just a function to calculate what is the time that is consuming a piece of code. So for that, let me just add one function to reflect the start time. And now let me put at the end of this try await functions, the calculate time. And let's run our code again. As you can see, yeah, the application is working, it's downloading the images. However, we are spending one second to complete this operation. I mean, yeah, it's fine, but can you imagine having other complex applications and then having to download multiple things, one after other, it will be a lot of boilerplate. Why not downloading those images in parallel? Fortunately, yeah, we have a way to avoid this kind of behavior. This kind of behavior is nice if you're just waiting one operation, that's cool. But if you're waiting multiple operations, but those operations are not depending on each other, you could use some parallel operations and then, well, wait until everybody is finished and return. So. For that kind of things, we have something called async let. Let me show you what is that. It's just as simple as mark every of those let statements with an async. Let's do that. That's all, except we'll run thing. We need to remove this thing. And let me explain how it will happen after that. Okay, with this new format, what we are doing is just an asynchronous binding, which means that we will assign the value to that particular variable 
but we won't create a suspension point in this case. So that means that everything will be executed one after other right away. For example, Charizard image shouldn't wait for this one. So every operation will start doing it as soon as possible. However, you need also another requirement. In this case, I'm getting an error because I am using these variables, but those variables are asynchronous. So in this case, we need to mark this statement with a wait. And since that all of them could throw an error, we also need to use try before the wait. Now, the use of await in this example is really simple to understand. We are just executing the process in this point, but once we require the variable, then at that point, we will create the suspension point using await. It's that simple. So in other words, instead of just executing this thing and creating a suspension point, then get the result and then move on to the next operation. We are just executing everything at the same time, or well, it will depend on the system. But once we require to use that variable, then Swift will asking us for a suspension point. So in this case, since that everything is in a single line, we just use an await. We will wait for all the images, but in parallel. Is that awesome? Now, let's run this again and see what is the time now. Maybe it's not so visible for you in the camera or in this example, but in the time, it's a lot faster. Now we have, I don't know, uh, 6,000 nanoseconds. It's way less than one second. And yeah, our code is working. This is a perfect case when you know already how many operations you want to do at the same time. So in this case, we know we have six operations at the same time. But for cases when you don't know exactly and that kind of operations are dynamic, it's better to use task group. But that's for another video. By the way, if you want to learn more about async await, you can click on the description on also in the video that I'm showing you right now. Also, you might noticing, oh, okay, this is a main actor wrapper. What is that? So we will explore that in the next video or in the car if it's already available. That's all for me. Thank you so much and have a great day.